Okay, we're cheating a little bit for today's video. In fact, we're not even leaving the garden because we've got a family of warthogs visiting us right here. So remember, winter in the low fell is also our dry season. Um, so the bush is a little bit scarce, uh, food harder to find. So this family do often sneak into the garden around this time of year. And just to show you, this is how they get in. <laughs> Here's one just burrowing under the fence as we speak. Uh, they're excellent diggers and even when there's electric wires in the way actually it doesn't make too much difference for them. Okay, so this is uh, what we call a sounder. That's the collective noun for a group of warthog. And that will be a sow um, with related offspring. So just here, these three on the right hand side, they'll be the um, piglets from the most recent litter. They would have been born in around November last year. And then that one just on the left with its bum in the air uh, would have been one of the offspring from last year. They'll often stay with the family group into the following year. Now, obviously, the name uh, warthog, that comes from the warts on the face. Uh, these guys don't really have them yet just because they're so young. Um, but the warts that we see on the adults, they're made from thick skin and cartilage. And the females just have one pair. While the male actually have two pairs, they've got an extra set just below their eyes. And they believe that those... Um, give extra protection for males when they fight. Obviously the risk of injury from tusks um, with those extra warts under the eyes give protection there. So just to talk about tusks, it's another thing that you can't really see on these little ones. Um, and actually what you can see on them is hair instead. You can see all that white hair coming out the side of the face. Uh, and that's a form of mimicry. This little one hasn't grown its tusks yet. Uh, so it grows the hair instead to make it look like it's got these formidable tusks. So that it still looks scary for predators. Okay, so these tusks, you can just see them on the older one at the back especially. Uh, these are modified canine teeth. And they grow constantly, uh, although they do get worn down. The top pair, there's actually two pairs there, one on the top jaw, one on the lower jaw. And the top pair are generally quite thick um, and blunt at the end. But the ones on the bottom jaw are razor sharp. Really much smaller, but much, much sharper. And those are the ones that can really do the damage. Um, I was once lucky enough to see an amazing sighting um, of a leopard which was waiting outside the uh, burrow of a warthog early morning and as the warthog came out the leopard got hold. Uh, we only arrived at the site in about 10 minutes after that happened but watched for another 10 minutes um, in the, fort, the fight that ensued between that warthog and the leopard. Uh, unfortunately the warthog did die in the end but not before it had ripped the testicle of the leopard open with one of its tusks uh, and it also had a, a really big gash on on its back as well which it spent many hours cleaning and sorting out after the fight after the kill okay so um in terms of feeding the warthogs are omnivores and they predominantly find their food by smell uh, so they mostly eat grass and roots and tubers and bulbs, uh, but they definitely enjoy worms and larvae and those kind of things if they come across them. Uh, and you'll notice that they're spending a lot of time down on their knees while they're feeding. Uh, this is more common in winter to see, and that's because the food is, like I said, harder to find underground. It takes a bit more work to dig it up. But just going down on their knees like that, it just gives them extra leverage to dig those roots and bulbers. Um, and actually, they've got reinforced kind of 
knee pads in which uh, they're born with, in fact, just to assist them in all that time that they do spend down there on their knees. And then obviously their nose is playing a very big part in the feed in here. That's like a calloused cartilaginous disc on the end of their nose there, which they're continuously using for digging. There you can see the two sets of warts, um, that bottom pair just above the tusks. And then you can see that this one is a male because it also has a set at the top. So the warthogs are diurnal, that means they're active during the day. Um, I don't know if, if you may be aware that we also have something similar called a bush pig. That's more of a nocturnal pig species. Uh, but the thought behind warthogs being active during the day is mostly due to their feeding habits. So just because of what we've discussed that they eat, uh, they do use the savannah, open grasslands. Um, and obviously that's a little bit of a dangerous place to feed at night in the in the open. Whereas if you feed there during the day, it's nice and hot, sunny, which often means that anything that wants to eat you is hopefully hiding in the in the bushes. And just some interesting behaviour here just at the back of the garden, just as these warthogs are on the way out. You can see them chewing on bone here. <clears throat> this is a very, very old skeleton of an elephant carcass from the bush. Uh, but you can see them really getting involved there with their teeth. More chewing than licking involved. Uh, and it's not uncommon um, to see herbivores and omnivores with this kind of behaviour often thought to give them extra minerals and nutrients that maybe they don't get from their predominantly plant diet. So when not busy in the garden and feeding during the day, uh, these guys sleep in burrows at night. And they'll generally use burrows uh, that have been made by aardvarks. They can make their own. You saw that one digging successfully earlier. Uh, but why dig your own when you can use somebody else's? So they'll move into old aardvark burrows, but they will make some adjustments. Uh, they'll often build like a shelf type area in the burrow. And that's actually for the piglets um, being born in the rainy season. If the burrow is flooded, uh, that's actually a big mortality reason for the piglets uh, that's how a lot of them die so they do make a little shelf uh, just that the piglets can go on safely and they'll have between three and six piglets per litter and they generally only come out the burrow once they're two or three weeks old